Hi guys and welcome along. Today we're going to paint that autumn favourite, the pumpkin. In fact we're going to paint a few pumpkins, so grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, it's time to go down to the pumpkin patch and we're going to paint ourselves some lovely pumpkin shapes. So, for those of you who've not painted a pumpkin before, just need to start off with a sort of squashed squashed circle. I say a squashed circle because an oval feels a little bit too much uh, the other way. And so we're going to paint ourselves hmm, maybe three or four different sizes. And then one thing that is my absolute favourite in pumpkins is the incredible curly whirly um, leaves and stems that come off pumpkins. It's absolute madness, honestly. Has anyone seen um, the Cinderella, Disney Cinderella? It's just, it's. I thought that was sort of complete madness, complete sort of cartoonness, but honestly, it's true. Okay, so we're going to do our pumpkins like that and have a little bit coming off there. Maybe a leaf coming out there, a leaf coming out there. So let's look at the actual pumpkin shape. So this one here, to section off our pumpkins, we need to draw these curved lines coming out from the center that are going to create the sort of very familiar textured ridges of the pumpkin. And we'll go for some different colors because of course, these days, we see all over Pinterest, these beautiful ghost pumpkins. So we've got our nice sort of three shapes, some beach balls, aren't they? And then we need some stalks. So just pop in some stalks of varying sizes. Now I've drawn that quite nice and strong, so I hope that you should be able to see that. And we are going to get started. So we're gonna have a classic orange pumpkin for sure. So why don't we start with that one? I think that brush is probably a little bit big. I'm gonna go for my size two instead. And I've got a nice sort of fairly light orange color here and I'm going to work section by section. And to start off with, I'm going to sort of paint a fairly wet color around the edge and then clean my brush off and draw that color into the middle, leaving a little bit of unpainted space. And I'm gonna go and get something a bit stronger in my cadmium orange and I'm going to just add a bit more to that outline. Clean my brush off, blot off the brush as well, and I'm just now going to work that in a little bit. Not overwork it. But that looks really nice to me. So then I'm going to do the alternating sections because I want to allow that first one to just dry of its own accord. Big confession, I've never actually been to a pumpkin patch. Um, like I say, I was really shocked to find out that the uh, stalks and stems grow as they do in the Disney cartoon. Um, so this is a really exciting one for me because I've never really painted pumpkins before. Halloween wasn't really a big thing in my house growing up. So yeah, I'm like a kid at Christmas, but I'm a grown up at Halloween. No, grown up in autumn. <laughs> right, so I'm got, I've got my three sections here. 
I'm going to move on to this one here. So I'm going to do a nice ghost pumpkin. So they've got this incredible sort of bluey, greeny, grey colour. So luckily in the sort of dregs of my palette there is a mixture of shadows and let's do the same technique. Clean that brush off. Just draw it down. And then over here to one side and I'm not just going to do that one just yet because that's going to touch the wet orange one. So in here I want to do a slightly more traditional one. It's going to be an orangey green colour. So we'll mix up a little bit of a sort of yellowy green. Bring in a bit more sap green down here. And I'm going to use the green as my sort of light wash and then the orange is going to come in and sort of define it a little bit. Now these are the kind of colours that could go very sludgy if you overwork them. So after I did that central wash and put the outline on it, I've left it alone. risk it because these colours are sort of in this in both pumpkins so I'm going to risk putting this wet one next to that one that's been drying now we just need to let those dry and fill in the gaps. So I've let the paint dry. I also rubbed out a little bit of the pencil just to lighten that up for myself. Um, and now we've got stalks and then the leaves, which is something I'm really looking forward to. But let's just have a quick look at these stalks. So I've got a nice bit of shadow mix. I might put a bit of ochre in there just to warm it up a little bit. And Pumpkin stalks are quite incredible things. Um, some of them curl right round like that. And then I'm just going to paint a few ridges. And just get a little bit of darkness in there. Just up in there. And painting these stalks can also help sort of define the top of the pumpkin a bit where the sections are coming in. For our ghost pumpkin we're going to do a, a pale one. A little bit of shadow at the bottom to define. We can use some of that shadow to just sort of draw down into the pumpkin. And then we've got our last stalk, just a fairly straight plain one. I'll use a little bit of green this time. And you can just blend that down 
into the pumpkin itself. Okay, very nice. So these little unpainted bits are what really make them work, in my opinion. Now it's time for the, um, if you've watched Disney Cinderella, uh, the Bibbity Bobbity Boo bit, which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to bring my greens over here so you can see what I've got. So I've got sap green, and then I think we might want a bit of brighter hookers green in here as well. And then some green gold as well. Okay. Oh, right, I just wish I had the music. <laughs> wish I had the, the soundtrack, but we can all sing it along in our heads. If you know what I'm going on about, of course. Right, so I've got all these swirly whirly lines. I'm gonna start off by just sort of painting those first and then we'll start to add leaves and extra curls. But I can't help myself so I'm just gonna To just pop in one there. I think if you feel so inclined, just go for it. If you're struggling to get the sort of smooth curls and swirls on your brush, I find holding my brush quite high and vertically allows the bristles to quite smoothly do those nice curls. Okay, that's a nice start. And now we will pop in some leaves. So a pumpkin leaf is a sort of three pointed uh, type of thing. Um, we'll pop one here. So I'm gonna start by sort of doing a, a central, sort of fairly sort of simple smooth sided leaf and then build upon it either side with some extra little pointers. If you've um, been watching my uh, autumn leaves from the previous tutorial, this has got a similar feel to the maple leaf. to your heart's content, start adding leaves and swirls. Just really simply at this point, I'm not adding any real detail in. We'll do that as we sort of continue on.
because that leaf is very much underneath the pumpkin. Give it a bit of shadow now. And adding in these leaves just means you can sort of help build this nice composition in this picture. I feel like I sort of want one to come poking out from behind there. Okay, that's looking really nice. We'll just let that dry and then we can start adding in some little crisp details to make it really, really pop. Okay, so pencil is all rubbed out now and I am going to start adding in a bit of detail. So I've got on my brush a mixture of sap green and French ultramarine and it's just giving these stems a bit more interest and depth. The way I'm doing that I'm just sort of edging some of these stems with a little bit of this colour. And we can also add a bit to our leaves you know how much I don't enjoy adding detail to leaves, so I like to try and keep it simple. And I find the best way of doing that is by adding in first a few simple leaf lines. And definitely having a bit down the stem but then with a clean wet brush just sort of smoothing out what you've got there and just bringing in a bit more of a blend Doing something like this kind of detail at the end really helps if you've got any little wobbly bits you've done that just need tidying up or looking a little bit more intentional, I suppose. Um, having this extra colour to just add in is, is always really handy. And I've got my brush again very vertical on the page because I personally find that a lot easier to paint long sweeping lines but that's just me I like to do a little just extra little leaf every time we've got a extra little growth coming off. And I'd say we're very nearly there, maybe a little bit of shadow but I think we've got a proper pumpkin patch going on there. So yeah, let's finish this off. We're just going back to our pumpkins and having a little look at how they're doing. So my shadow mix, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, sometimes a little bit of Mars black. I think there's a little bit in there from the palette. And I'm just going to use the shape of the pumpkin to add a little bit more depth to the shape of that. Of course that pumpkin was grey anyway so it sort of lends itself 
an orange one can still benefit from a bit of shadow. But you don't want to spend too much time sort of moving the paint about because it will start to disturb the orange a little bit. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit on the ground. In fact, I might use a bigger brush for that. And really, I'm just picking up a lot of colour that's already on the page there. And there we have our lovely pumpkin patch. Thanks so much for watching. Those are a really lovely classic autumnal staple that we're going to add into a wreath a little bit further down the line. And of course, we need to have a look at some spookier pumpkins towards the end of the month. But I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support. It enables me to make these lovely videos. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and comment below to let me know the kind of things you'd like to see me painting. And hit subscribe to make sure you never miss another video. Alright, bye!